right. A lot of questions came up about what I was doing, but above all, I wanted to know what it would take to make a good outdoor educator. And throughout doing all of the classes that I both helped teach and came along to shadow, and also went and interviewed different types of outdoor educators, I decided to come up with this basic list. Um, they have to be a teacher. It's not something that if you're not a teacher, you, I think you can do because you have this level of connection with your students that you have to have to keep their focus and they keep them wanting to learn more. And you can't just come in and spew facts at them. You have to have that like that patience and the creativity and the enough like kindness to think like, hey, we're gonna take a second. To start off, why is this a program I knew I wanted to join since the start of my junior year? The idea was truly alluring. It gave seniors, like myself, the opportunity to pursue something that Kagan Chug's curriculum didn't necessarily cover. It allowed us the chance to become independent and realize the capability of our own creative thinking. My individual project, From Paper to Pixels, was focused around solving a business problem. How should stores, specifically Kagan Chug, our school store, help to account for their financial records? Realizing the ineffectiveness of our previous system for handling such financial records, I started my WISE project in November, fueled by my continuous passion for accounting, to find out an automated accounting system that would help to minimize error, increase productivity, and really help to just bring the school store to the 21st century. Hi everyone, I'm Abby. Um, I'm a senior here. And so this is my WISE presentation. Um, I made a fashion magazine and I decided to title it Serendipity Magazine and I would like to tell you a lot about it. So um, where it all started was, um, I've always had a love for fashion. Um, I like shopping a lot, like any girl, <laughs> but um, I, I've just always been really interested in it and I wanted to come up with a way where I could share my love with, uh, for fashion with um, other students. So I like always read fashion magazines and I've noticed like they're made by adults and I, I didn't really like that. I wanted something that teens could use that were made by teens. Um, and they, I don't know, I just didn't like having an adult tell me how to dress, like what's cool, what's not, I don't know, I, just wasn't, I wasn't into it. So um, I thought that this would be a good way to allow myself to get creative. And um, I actually, one thing that I used was my inspiration book. So the title of my project is Creating a Gothic Gown. And when I first heard about Wise Projects, I was super excited and I knew right away that I really wanted to do one because this is the kind of thing that I really enjoy and it was, was an amazing opportunity to do something in a more structured format than I would necessarily have done. So, so when I started my project, um, I w went back to a decision I had made a long time ago. When I first started making period clothing, I had kind of a big choice to make either something from the Renaissance or the Elizabethan period um, or something from the Middle Ages. And when I first made the choice, I decided to make something Elizabethan because the tailoring was much less overwhelming because it, the fashions of the time formatted the body to a conical shape rather than accommodating people's curves. So when I started my WISE project, I really wanted to go back and make the, the decision that I really wanted to have made you know, four years ago and really make myself a high quality medieval dress that I could wear. Um, my target period, was the early 1400s um, because that is like the high middle ages and it's when garments really started to be tailored to the individual wearing them but before we got into shapewear such as corsets and that kind of thing. Classical music is always about listening to the voice and the beauty behind the voice but what I want you to do and what the purpose I want you to see <coughs> is that there is a story behind it. So originally my wise project was I wanted to pick three pieces, three French pieces, all from different eras and perform them.
game. This is called Tennis for Two, and it predates Pong by about 14 years. It was supposedly designed in about two hours and then built over the course of three weeks on an old analog computer. I think you'll see it in the footage. Um, and this was sort of the inception for modern video games. You can clearly see how it inspired Pong when that came out in uh, 1972. So for my original goal, I was going to make a series of videos about game design and reviews of specific games. And over the course of the six months that I spent researching and planning, I ended up doing a lot more of the research and then I only made one video. Um, but I put a lot of time and effort into it. I think you'd really like it. Um, and as a quick disclaimer, uh, because it was supposed to be like a series for the internet, it's sort of aimed at an audience who's already familiar with a lot of the gaming terminology and history. Hi everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, this is my wife's project, Better Environment Equals High Attendance. This guy right here is my favorite. This is the, um, the Scotch Broom. Um, it doesn't look too appealing now, but at the end of May, if you come close, you guys can actually see the buds on it. You can see the little buds on it. And at the end of May, early June, they'll grow out to be uh, completely red. This whole thing will be a, a completely red, vibrant. Now, unfortunately, when I, when I planned this, like Mr. Thompson knows, it was the, the, uh, the buds on it sent out this uh, white flower, almost similar to, to the snow cone. And that's kind of the whole point I was trying to get at, was I wanted to have the blue, which would grow into a big dome right here, with the white here, and a pop of red in, in the sides. And um, I believe for graduation, it will it will look like that. And it, it will get the school colors in here, and it um, will feel look nice. And the video is from one of my field experiences at Strong Middle School. I gave two lessons there in the month of March. And this one's from the second lesson. The first lesson that I did, I worked with the majority of the jazz band, except for the guitar players. And basically, I tutored them on a little bit of what you want to do as a jazz band as a whole to make a, a decent sound. And then the second lesson, I worked with just the guitar players, showing them some improv and theory stuff. All right, so, this is what I was talking about with the voice thing. Sometimes it'd be easier just I'm not saying you should like look what their chords are, like yeah. know the notes, but it's easier to just kind of like learn a couple of easy voicings. Yeah. Like, like mm -hmm. a good seven chord voicing would be, you do this, you got the one here, the seven here, and the three here. 